Good day, Strategy Gamers, and welcome back to episode three of our Let's Play series, Gary Grigsby's War in the West, uh, fourth Supreme Command scenario, which is the grand scenario, but with slightly more difficult conditions when you're playing against the Axis. This episode, we're starting in turn four with our air directive phase, um, and we'll try to get through turn four and turn five in this one episode here today. Um, so a bit of a recap, we had just... Uh, landed on Sicily and tried to advance up along the, the coast towards um, towards the strait to cut off the German forces and Italian forces. We also did start planning our uh, invasion of mainland Italy, and we're getting pretty aggressive there by looking at an invasion around Rome, uh, which is a little further north there. Um, so it's going to have some logistical opportunities for us, and it's kind of a high-risk, high-reward situation, but um, I, I think it might pay off well for us. I'm just really curious because I don't uh, have a great understanding, right, of the the better conditions that the Axis have in this scenario, uh, how well they'll be able to stop us from creating a good beachhead there. So we'll have to see how that goes. And then in uh, Northern Europe, uh, as historically consistent, there wasn't too much going on. Um, as the focus right now is on the med. So let's take a look at what we're going to do with our air directives. Again, we'll use these for the AI to create kind of the initial parameters of what's going to be flown, and then we'll go in and adjust, delete, add as needed. So right off the bat, I'm going to have them continue with uh, tactical attacks on airfields um, in the Mediterranean. Uh, the tactical air forces are going to um, focus on the ferries again, uh, which we've been doing with the high priority, and then units will be to a medium. Railways, ports, and interdict are all low. Air superiority, though, is the priority. Uh, strategic air directives during the day focuses on oil, uh, low focus on fuel. I'd prefer to cut off right at the raw source instead of uh, hitting both the refineries and the oil directly at the, the same consistency. The uh, ground attack in the south, we are using our strategic uh, assets for that, and that's going to continue bombing the airfields uh, to try to, as much as possible, uh, weaken the air arm of the Axis uh, before they even get a chance to fly against us. And then at night, we continue to just target manpower numbers to try to damage their morale, reinforcements, labor force, etc., etc. So we'll go ahead, and I'm happy with keeping these consistent, so we're going to assign those. And then we'll also select AI Manage Air. And then we can close out of here, and we can take a look at what was created. So this is pretty similar to what we've had suggested in previous turns. We have, um, yeah, I'm looking at this. I think we're going to change again for our strategic air force, kind of where they're looking, because flying a, this, this is a very large scope for them, considering so much of this is actually our area or our territory, if you will. So I think I'm going to change this because I want to focus on the airfields where we're targeting here, and then we'll change the area to, I don't know, maybe four. Let's see what that gives us. So I can actually bring that down to three, it looks like. So now we're targeting these two airfields that we have here. And we'll keep the intensity at high for that. And then I'm actually going to take our recon here move that over here as well try to get recon not only on the airfields but also just what are the defenses looking like here around Messina um, and we'll set that to mm, no we're not going to do strategic yeah that's all good here we have superiority, superiority, and ground attack on units. I actually really like the the area that the AI has chosen for this. We're going to keep that just as it is, actually. 
then when we scroll out, we're going to look at what else we have here in the north. So we see again, we've got um, bombing in really what is Germany itself. And these are night bombing runs. Well, actually, these two are day. So these are hitting the fuel, or excuse me, the oil, and then secondly, the fuel production. That's what these two are. So we'll continue with that. Here, we're targeting manpower. Here, this is kind of Netherlands, Belgium, and the very, very west of Germany. We're targeting at night manpower. And you know, I'm going to do the same thing that we have been doing with these, and that is I'm going to really reduce the area that they're operating these on, just because I don't think it's quite as important to bomb uh, the manpower of uh, Utrecht, Arnhem, um, these, these kind of Dutch population centers. I don't think that's as important. So we're going to try to cut down the size of these a little. Uh, I think four for that one. Yeah, so that, that looks a little better in my mind. Then we go over here, and again, I really I don't have as much of an emphasis on hitting these air bases. We have been trying to target these around Arnhem and such in previous turns. So like here we see that on turn two, which was two turns ago, they had 40 fighters, four bombers here. Um, but, you know, actually what I'm going to do is our tactical looking at it. Um, it looks like there's actually some moderate rain here. I'm just going to cancel the tactical missions entirely. So we're not going to do the recon or the airfield attacks with them. Um, weather conditions for these strategic bombing missions actually look, they're actually the same. The graphic, it was a little hard to tell with the coloring. Uh, it says current is fair. I'm a little surprised by that. We're going to let them continue as is. Well, no, we're, we're going to set minimum fly to fair just to make sure that on different days it doesn't change the weather condition. We're just going to make sure that they're not flying in anything worse than fair conditions. And last one. All right. So I think that does it with all of our um, air commands. Happy with all of that. Flight paths look good here. So we'll go ahead and execute our air directives. Okay, so we're in day two and operational losses are low, which I'm glad to see. Um, Total of about 200 now out of 5,200 sorties. It's not too bad. Majority do seem to be flak losses in air. Well, yeah, flak losses just jumped up right there. Okay. Yeah, not, not too bad of numbers there. Um... I'm a little disappointed, though, that the Axis haven't lost any uh, airframes on the ground, which means our efforts in the Mediterranean with the strategic assets to bomb their airfields uh, were very unsuccessful. Which actually, we can probably take a look at that here. Oh, instead of expanding, I closed out of it. Okay. Well, never mind. Uh, losses here, majority came with the 8th U.S. Air Force, it looks like, uh, 239. And really, it was the bombing of the oil and the fuel production, which we're going to keep up because we, we have to. Um, they're still continuing to lose a number of fighter escorts, though, in those bombing runs, so it's not completely one-sided, but it's not exactly uh, good news for us either. And then here we had 
these interdict missions in the med. And it looks like they're moderately successful. Um, worried here. Looks like we lost quite a bit on this mission. That was over in Messina. I wonder if that was AA induced. Okay. So now we get on to the ground combat portion. So we see here that the 10th Panzer Division is kind of blocking our path north, and with the terrain here, it is going to always be very difficult to make uh, too much progress, but at least now we've got a good idea of how they're all lining up here. I think what I'm going to first do, actually, is continue my advance um, to the west before we continue over here, because I want to get a lay of the land. We're going to try to cut off this city here. So we've done that. We can bring up this airborne unit. We'll let them prep for a turn before we actually attack. We're gonna bring you to Palermo in case they left it undefended, which they did not. Uh, and then we can bring you north here to continue um, holding this line along the northern coast. I think we will have you come here. Then we can look at bringing these guys forward. Debating if I, yeah, we're gonna come up here with this guy. And that's what I was hoping for, is to try to cut this guy off right here. Ooh, defensive value estimated at 20 though. That seems pretty tough for us to try to break through. So we're gonna hold there bring up these airborne units. Let's see. Have you... I don't know that I want to exhaust you going up there, but I think we need to make some progress. So we're going to do that. Down here we have some opportunity for rail repair. These are from the HQ, so I think, I think what I'm going to do is have this guy go north and repair. There we go. Keep all of this stuff in good order. So that's looking better. And then you can come actually mop up these rail lines here. And then when you're done with that, you can turn right around and you can work your way up the west coast. But you won't get there this turn, but at least make progress going back that direction. So now this entire quarter of Sicily, uh, we've got in good rail repair condition, or will have in good repair. So that's Sicily. Now let's take a look at some of our prep here. So we're at 6, 19, 8, 9, 9. So these guys... Mm -hmm. The question is if I want to bring some of these units to Sicily, or if I think I have enough here to mop it up. And I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to bring them to Sicily, and not necessarily for their combat value in cleaning up Sicily. Rather, I want to bring them there to um, be ready to use the Sicilian ports to support our invasion landings around Rome. Right, so I want them to leave from um, Messina, Palermo, etc. on the north coast of Sicily, so that way they have um, less attrition getting here to the landing sites as reinforcements. So that's what we're going to do there. Take them to what appears to be the best condition port value that we have here. Looks like we didn't have enough to get all of them on, so we were only able to bring this one infantry division. 
Okay. Well, that is what it is. Looking up here in K, I'm going to take this stack and continue their shipment to the Mediterranean. However, oh, I didn't have them on the actual port city. Here we go. So now they're in Bristol. Now we can load them up and ship them off to the Med. Oh, Transport 10 was hit. We lost 853 men from that. That's not good. Those, um, those sea transport losses can really add up over time, so you, you do have to try to be mindful of those. But I think we've got all of our ground combat phase work done here, so we're going to go ahead and end turn. And we'll see what the Axis decides to do, if anything. And then we'll be right back to our air planning phase before we know it. The, the great mystery, like I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, is just, I'm really curious, and I'm, I, I like this, by the way. <laughs> I, I, uh, I enjoy it, and it's why I chose this scenario, but not knowing just what the improved and increased values to the access position right now will have on their more strategic decisions. Um, so, for example, are they going to be a little more committed to uh, Sicily and... Um, their evacuation, will they be a little slower? Um, or rather, do they get out of there at the same speed and use those assets that were recovered from the North Africa Corps to reinforce just all of Italy, thus making the next invasion much more difficult? Uh, we may find ourselves in a position where we've taken Sicily just fine, um, but in one or two months' time, when we're looking at invading near Rome, uh, it's a complete abject failure and we're in a pretty tight spot, right, of having to work our way either all the way up the mainland of Italy through uh, the ports around Messina and the ferry there, um, or we find ourselves in a position where we just have to go completely ahistorical and look for other options, uh, whether that be um, Greece or Corsica or southern France, who, who knows? Uh, and that's one of the exciting things about this game, too, is it does... Um, it does enable a lot of different options for you to take as the player. Now, a number of them are just not that feasible for the same reasons that the Allies did not, right? Just invade uh, southern France, for example, or go up through Greece, right? Uh, it turns out that Ike uh, did have some good ideas, and the Supreme Allied Command uh, put together a plan that worked. Uh, are we going to come up with one that is measurably better? Unlikely, but maybe we can still make it work. At the end of the turn here, we see our losses. Uh, again, we see that the Axis have not taken many because we have not really engaged them in battle, right? Most of the action has been related to the air war. Um, but we do see that they took 55,000 men lost. Um, or excuse me, that's total. That's total. So for this turn, there was nothing. I misread that column. Uh, we lost 766. I would assume that uh, most of those were measured from the... Uh, transport hit that we took. Air losses. Uh, we see that we lost 45 pilots, 19 level bombers, 15 fighter bombers, and 14 patrol craft, 8 torpedo bombers. That, that's a little interesting. Um, okay. And in terms of, and actually, let's just see here real quick, maybe what some of our most common losses were. So the P-40 Warhawk, Wellington, Halifax Bomber. Okay. Destroyed units, I don't think there are going to be any. Yep, there's no destroyed units to look at. In terms of our air directives, I think everything kind of status quo, we're going to keep the same priorities. So we'll let that make some directives, and AI manage the air, and then we'll fine-tune again as needed. So let's start here with Sicily. And we're going to do...
We really weren't effective in the last time we tried this, were we? I'm actually having second thoughts if we even want to to try this again. You know what? We're going to um to cancel this time. We're not going to do it. And we're going to actually I want to see here. So we did get recon last turn. So here we have a total of four fighters, total of 19 fighters. So that's a lot less now. We don't have good recon up here at Croton. So what I'm going to do is ask the Tactical Air Force to actually change their recon location to here. So we can try to get recon on these airfields, because maybe these are the airfields that we should now be bombing. Right? I think that's probably a good question for us to ask. I'm going to change the intensity to high. And I'm excited to see kind of what is up here. And then for the superiority in the ground attack, I think the ground attack, we're going to change the hex a little closer to Messina here then the air superiority we're also going to move over Messina with the same range there we go so the focus can still be on the ferries here and let's actually take Why is it not let me drag that route over? Hmm. Oh, there we go. I don't drag. I need to click and then click again. Don't want them flying over the land there because I think there might be some flak with these units as well. So we're going to adjust that ever so slightly. We can do the same probably. Is it the ground attack that has that? The ground attack, I guess we do want them flying over to actually attack. So that's that's okay. No worries there. Okay, that's all good. Now we look in Northern Europe. Oh, and we see that now it's going a little bit south here. That's interesting. That is right on the border of Germany and France. And I'm going to change that width down to six, I think to try to limit the amount of time that we're bombing without fighter escort. So that's why we did that. And then over here, and again, I don't, I don't mind these targets they're choosing, I just don't want them to go quite as far into um, the low country. And we're gonna do the same thing here, where it just changes to six again. All right. Now, weather's gotten a little better. 8th U.S. Air Force, they're fine up there. Here we have our tactical Air Force. Just trying to think of where we should. It really feels like kind of the, the um, Dusseldorf area um, in Dortmund uh, should probably be an area that we look at kind of minimizing the impact of enemy air superiority. So I'm going to shift these over to those uh, cities. So we can try to get a good grasp of what are in these airfields. I'm going to change this to high for one turn. And I don't think we have any recent intel on these airfields. So we're going to take this ground attack and we are also going to move it over those population centers in the airfields that are around them. We're going to set it up to a five. Yeah, five works. Um, but I'm going to set the intensity to low. And then next turn, when we have better intelligence of what is actually here, that's when we'll turn the intensity back to high. Right? Once we know which airfields it is that we really do want to target more specifically. I don't... 
this flight path. Just don't know if we want to go further around Lille or what what they might have in terms of anti-air here. It's probably going to be okay. Yeah, so we'll leave that. Uh, let's go ahead and execute these air directives. Oh, good. We're getting our recon in southern Italy. Good. Operational losses are still low. The, the operational losses kill me, so I, I hate when that number creeps up. Air combat, flak, I can understand all of that. Um, the other thing that we might play with um, in future episodes too, and this is one that I just need to better educate myself on, uh, but I know there are resources out there on the forums and such to help, and the, the manual of course too, but the, um, the, the flak can really be helped with uh, settings in terms of the... Uh, the airframes and what um, altitude uh, you're having them fly. So I think there might be some opportunity for us to, I hate using the term min-max because that's not really the, I'm not going for the perfect min-max with my channel or these videos on Gary Grigsby, right? I'm a little bit more of a casual player, but I think there might be some opportunity there just to make it a little better. So we might take a look at that in the future. But uh, it's interesting that air combat is kind of four to one more costly for us this air phase than it was in just even the previous turn where it was more one to one. Um, so I'm wondering if that has to do with us doing a lot more tactical flights over more contentious areas with those recons. Um, and look at that. Here we can actually see now. So... Yeah, tactical air force, we lost 20 on ground attack, 13 on air superiority, so this is in Italy. And we had, yeah, the second RAF tactical air force lost 96 on their ground attack. And they were doing air base damage here and trying to take out airframes on the ground, and they were just not successful. That's the only way to put this. They weren't successful. Um, wow. So now we might actually have to rest them next turn, if anything. The recon wasn't too bad, though. It wasn't too bad. The RAF Bomber Command lost 80. Um, you can see they're doing some pretty good damage to those cities. The heavy industry impacts are pretty good to see. Vehicles is another one that I wish we could target more, but we just can't can't hit everything, so we have to prioritize. Might as well hit their their fuel and oil because the vehicles need the fuel and oil, the mechanized units need the fuel and oil, and most specifically, their Panzers need the fuel and oil. So uh, we're going to keep targeting those as the emphasis. We do have the Eighth U.S. Air Force this time with. 176 and then 61 losses, so again, quite quite large, but they're doing a lot of damage to that oil production. Um, kind of feels like their attacks over these three locations, which I'm not going to put too much effort into pronouncing, if you guys will forgive me for that, um, have been more productive, or excuse me, have been less productive No, no, no. This is more productive because this is 30 oil production versus 2 or 1 or 1. While the percents are higher, at the end of the day, here, here's a way to think about it. Number of aircraft lost per oil production damaged um, is much higher in uh, Nienberg, Wolfsburg, Krochschwig, etc. Um, so maybe we put a little less emphasis on these locations next turn. I think that's a good consideration for us. All right, but now we are on the ground movement phase. So let's hop down here to Sicily. And we are going to advance, advance, advance. So first, let's see if we can't knock this guy out. They had a unit committed to the defense, but it wasn't enough, so they did retreat. It's 260 men. Here we're going to bring this air brigade forward. 
going to attack again. They held, though, because they had a fortification level. It must have been from previous units that were occupying that hex. We're going to go forward with these airborne units. Now we can push up along this coast road here. Gets us to 19, so we're at 1 to 1. I'm going to focus on pushing in the north then, I think. Let's maybe have these guys attack and try to push them back. Okay, good. So routed them that time. I should have done that from the get-go. That was an error on my part. Take these guys off ships. And I think we'll have... These are U.S. forces, so we'll have them go to the west. You can come up here. And you can come over here. Let's now attack here. They surrendered. Oh, that's good. That's very good. Take the city. And let's attack, because if we got lucky, that would have been pretty good. We could attack with these guys, but I mean, they're outnumbering us two to one, so we're just going to wait on that, I think. Okay. Well, that's all good news. Now I think we'll continue our rail line repair north here. Really trying to follow the route that our troops are taking. Over here, these guys will continue west. And this unit will kind of have do a perimeter around the island, repairing that rail line. And then they can both work their way more inland to some of those routes after that. Good. Good, good, good. Let's see, too, what a recon got us over here. Okay, so there's only seven fighters there in Croton. And there's nothing in these air bases, really. There's a lot of ground units here, though, um, right at this choke point. Um, so I'm kind of glad that we didn't decide to do the invasion there. That would have been, a, I, I feel like, a pretty conservative decision. Um, but it also has me worried if we're going to find the exact same thing in the north by Rome. Uh, because that looks like it'd be quite a bit to get through. Okay. Well, yeah, so where... Where are their airframes? Maybe we don't... Maybe we're going to switch it next turn to not be bombing their airfields at all. In Italy, because I'm just not seeing that there's much opportunity there. Uh, prep's getting pretty high on some of these. The others are still at 12, 16, which means we're probably going to have, I don't know, another four turns or so of getting these guys up there, which feels like a lot, and it is, but um, not too much we can do about it. Let's load these guys and them over here. There's not enough to load them. Okay, so let's maybe bring that infantry there, try to load the infantry. Let's see here. So that worked. Don't have enough strategic movement points to unload them, but now we're there. We've landed. That's good news. We look up here in the UK, and what I forgot to do in the previous turn was get ready in Bristol the next wave of forces that we want it to um, bring to the Med. So these are part of the 5th U.S. Corps. It's a separate U.S. Infantry Regiment, U.S. Cavalry Group. There's not anything too impressive about the 5th U.S. Corps. So are there other units that we can maybe use instead? So there's this armor brigade. It's also the 6th British Airborne Division. 
there's there's going to be a whole lot more forces coming in here to the UK um, as the Allies continue building up. So I think what we're going to do is take some of these armored forces. We'll take the 6th British Airborne Division as well. Take these guys and I think probably next turn we'll move them to the med. Um, I'll leave you 15th British Infantry Division, though we'll move south by rail. So let's get you to Cardiff. The rail yard there's large enough to get you off the rail. What else do we have in the north here? 3rd British Infantry Division. Seems useful. Air Portable Division. Okay. Let's take the uh, 3rd British Infantry Division down to Cardiff as well. Don't know if you have enough to unload. Oh, you did. Good. Not enough to move from there, though, but it's progress. Just move these guys north here to get ready to also go. So maybe what I'll do is we'll take this stack, this stack, and this stack. These three stacks will go in the next three turns. I think that'll work. I think that'll work just fine. So we continue having good progress here in Sicily. I think we can go ahead and end the turn and see if they counterattack or anything like that. I, I'd be a little surprised at this stage in the war. Most of the action is certainly happening in the air war more so than the ground war, even though we have finally had a beachhead and have started taking over Sicily. Um, things will get a little bit more dynamic with our combat. I don't know if dynamic's the best word to describe the Italian campaign, but things will get a little bit more interesting with um, our invasion on mainland Italy, and as we work our way north, um, I, I think things will be a little bit more intense there in the attacks we're making. There's still really good defensive terrain for them, uh, but there's areas for us to have breakout pockets, um, and we're going to have a very tough time uh, trying to manage and create a beachhead that we can work out from. Uh, when we do land next to Rome, that's going to be the greatest challenge we'll face. Yep, so it doesn't look like we're going to get any counterattacks. You see that they again pulled back uh, one full hex there in terms of their withdrawal through Messina. So it doesn't look like we're going to get any units cut off, which is a little unfortunate. Um, other than what is west by Palermo and such, but those are just Italian forces that we expected to catch regardless. On to our logistics phase here. Speaking of logistics, I think I'm missing... No, I have, I have two rail repair units, and they're both in Sicily, so we're fine there. Keeping those two up and consistent with the front line is going to be very important for us. So in turn five, there were some units that were destroyed uh, as we captured cities on the west coast of Sicily. Total ground losses. Um, looks like 39 for the Axis, 726 for us. Uh, totals now look like 6,600 versus 2,300. And... Yeah, we, we did a little bit there to their vehicles for permanent losses. Lost a Sherman, a Crusader, troop carrier, 21 cargo ships, okay. Air losses. Our air losses were actually down from the previous turn. Lost half as many pilots. That's That's all good news. The torpedo bombers, I need to research that, where the heck those are being spent. Oh! Actually, of course, I know they're they're probably part of the um the air wings that are doing the attacks on the ferries. Of course, that's what it is. Uh, through the strait by Messina, 
Uh, so that's where we have torpedo bombers in action so, so much, and that's where we're getting the losses from. Okay, so that makes sense. So quite a bit going on. Um, been a pretty smooth episode. Um, I would say two episodes from now will probably be to the point of landing near Rome. Next episode, I'm hoping that we can get uh, Sicily completely kind of under our control. And then three episodes from now, we're going to be looking at, hey, how do we really define breakout and translate our beachhead uh, from our amphibious landings into a, another front um, that we're fighting the enemy on. So, as always, guys, thanks so much for your support of the channel and of the Gary Grigsby titles. Any comments or questions or feedback, please toss them in the comments section below. And as always, Strategy Gamers, hoping you have yourselves an excellent day. Bye now.